Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah It's important for us as Muslims, as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to understand the da'wah to tawheed the call to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone because that's the asas of Islam that's the foundation of Islam and that's what the shahada dictates from us and that's what the pillars of Iman and the pillars of Islam that is from the pillars of Iman and the pillars of Islam. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, the hadith of the Arkan of Islam that mentioned the five pillars of, uh, of uh, Islam, he said, Al-Islam and tashhada and la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammad rasulullah wa tuqimu salah wa tu'ti zakat wa tasawm ramadan wa tahajj albayt in istata'ta ilayhi sabil the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when the angel jibril came to him in the form of a man and asked ya muhammad akhbirni an islam tell me about islam o muhammad so then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned those five pillars of Islam and the first one being the shahada, shahada to in la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah to bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad ﷺ is the last prophet and messenger of Allah. So that shahada is Tawheed. Likewise, from the usul iman or from the arcanal iman or not the arcanal iman but the yet yeah, the arcanal iman, a sitta, the first pillar of iman is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in Tu'mina Billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa liyawm al-akhir wa tu'mina bi qadri khayrihi wa shar that he said in Tu'mina Billahi it is to believe in Allah and believe in the angels in Tu'mina Billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi and his books wa rasulihi and the messengers. When tu'minu bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. Wal yawm al akhir tu'minu bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. And the day of judgment and believing in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the decree of Allah, the good and the evil. So this is an exaltation of Tawheed. Naam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We hear an animal. Let's make sure it's a animal that we can deal with. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah. Allahu Akbar.
So those are the main reasons why Ahlul Sunnah emphasizes Tawheed and calls the Tawheed. And as our Sheikh Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi'i, Allah Yarhamahu, said, A da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah, or da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah, da'watun min kitabi la ila kitabi la, wa min sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ila sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the call of Ahlul Sunnah, the da'wah of Ahlul Sunnah, this is the minhaj, the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah, is calling from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah. That's Tawheed. And that's everything that Islam came with. And from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, this is why the da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah is so pure. And it will remain pure, but we hope to be min ahlihi. We hope and pray to be from its people, meaning those people who maintain the purity and call to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and not to ourselves, not to our groups, not to our Ahzab. Because our success will come with being from Ahl Tawheed, being from the people of Tawheed. And so I thought it would be relevant for us and beneficial that we talked about some of the sifat of Ahlul Sunnah, some of the khasais of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Who are the people of the Sunnah? What do they call to? What is their minhaj? How can we be from them? So we will talk about in a series about some of those important traits that Ahlul Sunnah possesses. And those who differ from Ahlul Sunnah and those who differ from Ahlul Sunnah that means that they are on another minhaj, another path and if they are from the Muslims then they are the, from the people of Ahl uh, Iftiraq they are from the people who divided into sects and groups and Ahzab and this is the foundation of Hizbiyah which we want to avoid the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said إِفْتَرَكَتِ الْيَهُودَ عَلَىٰ إِثْنَ وَسَبَعِينَ فِرْقَةً وَإِفْتَرَكَتِ النَّصَارَ عَلَىٰ إِثْنَتَيْنَ وَسَبَعِينَ فِرْقَةً وَسَتَفْتَرِكُ هَذِهِ أُمَّةً عَلَىٰ ثَلَاثَ وَسَبَعِينَ فِرْقَةً كُلَّهَا فِي النَّارِ إِلَىٰ وَاحِدَةً كُلَّ مَنْ هِيَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قَالَ مَنْ كَانَ عَلَىٰ مِثْلِ وَمَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِ الْيَوْم the Prophet والسلام, said uh, that the Jews would break into 71 sects and the Christians into 72 sects and my nation into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? Who are they, Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and my companions. So that lets us know that that foundation we want to be upon is the foundation of Ahlul Sunnah and is the foundation of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he let us know, he foresaw, and that's from prophecy, that he, Salawatul Rabbi Wasallamu Alayhi, saw that his nation would break into sex. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave him that knowledge that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would know and knew that his Ummah would divide, that they would split, that they would not remain upon what they were meant to be upon. And that is as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in Kitab Al-Kareem, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold on all of you fast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has commanded us to be, to adhere to the rope of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاَعْتَسِمُوا حَبْلِ اللَّهِ So in the first part of the lie, ayah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commands us to adhere to, his, to the rope of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And الْأَمْرُ يُفِيدَ الْوُجُوبِ So when we have a command, 
from the book of Allah or from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that means that that command in its origin is an obligation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us, therefore it's an obligation that we what? At tasimu bi We hold on all, uh, we hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also in the same ayah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often gives a, 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 a nafi wa ithbat or bil aks. Uh, an affirmation and a negation. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed or ordered and commanded that we hold to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the same ayat, he prohibited us from dividing. And he said, Jami'an, he said, all of all of you, all together, all of you hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. tafarraku, and do not divide. So he prohibited us from division. Well, when nahi, you feed a tahrim. That when there's a prohibition in the shar, that illustrates for us that that action is, a prohibit, is prohibited in its origin. Meaning that it is, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited, that means it's haram. Unless there's other dalil. Dalil min what? Min kitabillah, o sunnah al rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which shows us that that dalil is now from a nahi to something which is makru or one of the other ahkam in the shara. Then it begs the question, if we're not to divide and we're ordered to hold on to the rope of Allah, what is the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the mufassirin, the people of taf tafsir, they mention that the Hablillah, some mention that it's the Quran. And we know that the Quran orders us to wa'ati Allah wa'ati Rasul. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, obey Allah and obey His Messenger. So the Quran orders us to adhere to, the, to, uh, uh, to obey Allah, His commandments, and obey His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. And we know those commandments from the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know them from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And some of the mufassirin say, mufassirin, they, they mention that uh, this hablillah is the, uh, is, uh, is the Sunnah. And that la ta'arud, there's no contradiction in what the mufassirin say about this this ayat in that they complement some of their tafsir complements others and this is this is what is known as called ikhtilaf to know meaning uh, differences and gradations of interpretation not differences that contradict one another not direct opposing opposites and we've talked about this in many other durus prior to this so this gives us an indication that we are ordered to be one ummah. But however, the Prophet ﷺ prophesied that we would break, we would split. The Prophet ﷺ also mentioned in another hadith that he said, He ﷺ said that whoever lives after me will see many differences. So after the time of the Prophet ﷺ, that the Ummah would split and the people would see many differences. Look how many differences we see now in 2018. But all throughout the history of Islam, we've seen groups and sects appear and people with new manahij, new various ways and methodology of either understanding the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or negating the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We've seen so many different practices. And sometimes the ikhtilaf is in on a whole nother level where people are both claiming to be from Ahlul Sunnah, but al ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musamiyat. The reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. We also learn from the hadith of iftiraq that the Ummah would split and they would have these divisions based on many, many differences. As the, in the other hadith where the Prophet said, You'll see many differences, those who live after him. 
he also provided a prescription. فَعَلَيْكَمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّتَ خُلَفَاءَ رَاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِينَ So it's upon you my sunnah in the sunnah of the Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdiin. It's upon you adhering to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifa, meaning Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. This is what we're ordered to do. This is the Saratullahi al Mustaqeen. This is the straight path in which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another hadith uh, mentioned and emphasized that we should adhere to. And with regards to this ikhtilaf, so in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Usikum bi taqwullah. I advise you to fear Allah, or I command you to fear Allah. Wasami wa ta'a, and hearing and obeying. Wa'in ta'amara alaykum abd, even if a slave is over you meaning a slave becomes the leader or whoever becomes the the leader of the muslims from amongst the muslims for verily those who live uh, from amongst you will see many differences and this is the prophet sallallahu is addressing the sahaba what about us in our time the Prophet ﷺ then provided the prescription, the medicine. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي It's upon you, my sunnah. وَسُنَّتِي خُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِينَ And the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifa. مِنْ بَعْدِ تَمَسِّكُوا بِهَا وَعَذُوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنُّوَاجِذِ And adhere to it. And cling to it with your molar teeth. Your molar teeth, Ahabitifillah, this is in the back of your mouth. Here, your molar teeth. That means for in order for you to adhere to, uh, to, to bite and cling to something with your molar teeth, that means you are fully have engaged your mouth in clinging to something. If I were to illustrate by using a miswak or something and I don't have anything with me, my molar teeth, that means it's going to the back of my mouth in order to cling. So here the Prophet والسلام, is illustrating the importance of adhering to his sunnah. That you, you should cling to it. And, the, and, the, and that of the Salaf al-Salih. And at the Rasihim, and at the head of the Salaf al-Salih, is the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu ta'ala majma'een. Listen to what Ibn Rajib says about this hadith. And then so the Prophet ﷺ said, وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ And إِيَّاكُمْ And beware of newly invented matters. فَإِنَّ كُلُّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَ For verily every newly invented matter is an innovation. وَكُلُّ بِدَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance. So we see the importance of adhering to that asl, that usul of Ahl Sunnah. What is uh, Ibn Rajib said, commenting about this hadith? He said, "Have a ikhbar minhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bima waqa'a fi ummatihi ba'dahu aw ba'dihi min kathrata ikhtilaf fi usul al-din wa furu'ihi wa fi al-a'mali wa aqwali wa itqadat wa hadha muwafiq لَمَا رُوِيَ عَنْهُ مِنْ إِفْتِرَاقْ أُمَّتِهِ عَلَى بِدْعٌ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةٌ وَأَنَّهَا كُلَّهَا فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا فِرْقَةَ وَاحِدَةٌ وَهِيَ مِنْ كَانَ مَنْ كَانَ عَلَى مَا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ وَأَسْحَابِهِ وَكَذَلِكَ فِي هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَمَرَ عِنْدَ الْإِفْتِرَاقِ وَإِخْتِلَافِ بِتَمَسِّكِ بِسُنَّتِهِ وَسُنَّةِ خُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ والسنة هي الطريقة المسلوك فيشمل ذلك التمسك بما كان عليه هو وخلفاؤه الراشدون من اعتقادات وأعمال وأقوال وهذه هي السنة كاملة ولهذا كان السلف قديما لا يطلقون اسم السنة إلا على ما يشمل ذلك كله وكثير من العلماء المتآخرين يخصل اسم السنة بما يتع بما يتعلق باعتقاد باعتقادات لأنها أصول الدين والمخالف فيها 
على خطر عظيم beautiful statement and that's why we had to read the whole statement of Ibn Rajab here's what he said about the, that hadith and those two hadith that we already mentioned he said rahimahullah ta'ala he said this is uh, uh, the news or the you know the prophecy of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said about what would happen to his nation after him from the many divisions in usul al-deen and furu'ihi and its branches and from actions and statements and beliefs meaning that we would divide in every which way we can in aqeedah in minhaj in, in, in manners everything And he said, and this is in accordance or in agreement with the other hadith, which is the hadith of iftarak. The hadith of, uh, the, that talks about the divisions that we said, where the Prophet ﷺ said, that the Jews would break into 71 sects, ila akhira hadith, to the whole hadith. So this is muafiq with that hadith, letting us know for sure that this would happen and for sure there's not a Muslim today who doesn't realize that if they know any other Muslims that we have differences. And he said and that his, his nation would break into sex in the, in the one narration. And he said, and that all of them are in the fire except one, except one group. And he said, and he, and, and this group is that which is upon what he was upon and his companions. And likewise, in this hadith is the command that when there is this division that we see, and these differences, these this differing and these differences and these bickering, is that the that we should adhere to his sunnah and the sunnah of his Khulafa Rashidin. So that when this bickering, when this division comes and arises, that the prescription is holding on to the sunnah. It's going back to the sunnah. That's your answer. That's why you have to have ilm so you know what the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is. That will give you some basira and and and, and fiqh fi deen to know how to deal with the differences. When someone says, no, this is the Salafi Minhaj, or this is the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and this one says, no, this is the way. And this one says, no, this is the way. But you, you have tools. You have tools. And those tools are the, the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam and the methodology of the Salaf. What were the Salaf upon? What were the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'anu majma'een upon? And then he mentions that the Sunnah it is the path uh, which is traversed. And this includes uh, to adhere to what he was upon and his rightly guided Khulafa Rashidin from their Aqidah, their creed, and their actions, and their statements. And this is the full Sunnah. This is a Sunnah Kamila, as he says. And he said, and, it, and in regards to this, the Salaf, Qadimin, you know, in the past, uh, they used to refer to the name Sunnah basically as everything in the religion. That's how the Salaf were. They would, uh, they would, they would, they would, they would not uh, refer to the name Sunnah except all of that included, meaning the whole religion. That's how the Salaf. That's why you have bo books like a Sunnah lil Khalal. Uh, a sunnah uh, in, in all those books lil ala ala laqai asul ahl sunnati wal jamaa and all these these books uh, that were entitled sunnah because the salaf used to regard the term sunnah to include the whole be deen that's what they meant when they meant by ahl sunnah means someone who adheres to pure islam all of islam kamil and then he says that the later ulama they would specify that the sunnah is those things just related to uh, creed, ittiqadat. Uh, uh, and, that and that's because it is the usul of the deen, meaning your creed is the usul of the religion. And the mukhalif, the one who differs with that, then they are on a seriously, seriously dangerous path. So that's a beautiful statement of Imam Ibn Rajib for us to, to reflect upon. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And until the next sitting, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.